So we're starting this new series called Out of This World. Can you say that loud and proud? Out of This World. I want to jump right into our scripture today because it's going to be our scripture for the next couple weeks. But it says this in 1 Peter. It says, but you are, this is for you. Who's a you are? I am, all right? You're a you are. But you are a chosen people. You've been chosen by God. Now, a lot, a lot of people think, well, I chose God. No, you didn't. The Bible says you didn't choose me. I chose you. So it's a cool thing to know why well, I choose God, eh, okay, but it's even greater to know that the God who made the heavens and the earth, who hung every star in his place, he picked you by name. Yeah. He chose you. You are a chosen people. It says you are a royal priesthood. Come on, some of you need to put your crown on. Some of you have been walking around without your crown. It's time to put, you're a chosen, a royal priesthood. You are a priest in God's kingdom. What does that mean? You're called to do spiritual things. You're not called to a nine to five job. That nine to five job is there to support you to make sure you have the money and all those things get so that you can do something for God. If you ain't doing something for God, you're missing out on the best life possible. And attending church isn't doing something for God. Serving and loving people, getting involved in what God's doing. You are a royal priesthood, you are a holy nation. Every service, nobody amen to that one. Because nobody likes to be holy. Or is it that we don't think we ever could be? And so we won't amen it because, eh, but unless you're amening, hey, I'm a holy nation. The Bible says you are the righteousness of God in and through a person called Jesus Christ. You can't get holy on your own. But when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, it makes you holy, it makes you righteous. He goes, you are a special possession. You're God's special possession. God wants your life. He made your life. He formed your life, and he uses your life. And he says, you're all this for one reason, so that you could declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful, marvelous light. Let me ask you, do you remember your pre-Jesus story? Come on, how many of you were world-class sinners? Anybody? Yeah. Come on, you got an A plus in sinning. You couldn't get an A in class, but in sinning, you blew it up. Come on, I know some of your story. You ought to be like, that's me. I'm an a, I was an A plus sinner. Your pre-Jesus story was one thing. Never forget your pre-Jesus story. If you forget your pre-Jesus story, you'll never enjoy your Jesus story today. Because you have to remember what you came from. You have to remember how far you've come. You have to remember what God has done in your life, what he's done with your life, and ultimately what he wants to do through your life. If you forget where you came from, you might go back to it. You got to remember where you came from because you are out of this world. It goes on to say this. You were once not a people, but now you're people. You once didn't have mercy, but now you have mercy. You are foreigners and exiles. In one translation, it says you are strangers and aliens. Some of you needed permission to be strange. You are a stranger. You're a strange person. Look at your neighbor and say, you strange. No, you got to say it like that. You strange. Now notice who they looked at next to them. You're strangers and aliens. In other words, Peter was saying, you are out of this world. There is something different about this church. There's something different about people of faith. There's something different about people of hope. We are people in the world, but we are not of the world. We are out of this world. The Bible teaches this, that you are God's people chosen by him. Man, that should blow our minds. Does that blow your mind? God chose you? Come on, look at the junk in your trunk. How much stuff that you have that you're like, I can't believe God chose me. Man, I still get emotional thinking about what God brought me from. But I'm so grateful that he ain't done with me yet. That he's still getting started. I'll be honest, I'm still a little rough around the edges. But that's okay. That's where you amen. amen. <laughs> you're a chosen people. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. God's special possession. And he says you are a stranger and an alien. In other words, this is not your final destination. 
you're here for 70, 80, 90 years, whatever it may be, and some tragically, sadly, much younger. But how you live here determines where you will live after here. The church, we know our home. It's heaven. It's face to face with God forever. It's in the presence of Jesus, the one who bled and died for you and for me. This world's not your home. Stop living like this is your home. I mean, you are a son or daughter of a king. There's royalty in your bloodline. You're an heir with Christ. That means everything God has is yours. I thought that would get you a little excited. This. Everything God has is yours. Jesus said this, the world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it, but you are no longer part of this world. I chose you to come out of the world so it hates you. Not everyone's going to get you. Not everyone's going to understand the church. People are going to walk into church and say, man, these people are crazy. They got smoke machines going. We're just burning incense before the Lord. Uh, <laughs> we got all these lights for one reason. Demonstrate Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. I could spiritualize anything in this room. We have no windows because you only need one no window, and it's the window called Jesus who comes in. Uh, The Bible says, you don't belong to the world. And the world's never going to fully understand you. They're not going to understand why when you're at break at lunch, you stop to bow your head to pray for food. They're not going to understand while you're at your college campus why you pull out your Bible during free period. They're not going to understand. But God did not call us so that we're understood. He called us so we would declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness and into his wonderful light. God has equipped you. Wherever you're at, God put you there on purpose for a purpose. It is not an accident. You are in the family you're in, the school you're in, the business you're in. Stop complaining about where God put you because where God put you, he put you there on purpose. Begin to thank God for where he put you. Begin to thank God for where you are because you're not of this world and you view things differently. When everyone else is complaining about your boss, honor your boss. When everybody else is complaining they didn't get a pay raise, honor God and keep your mouth shut. Because yeah. God honors honor. Yeah. And if you honor those who are above you one day, you'll be above them. Yeah. It's the principle of honor. It's the law of reciprocity. What you sow, you reap. You sow honor into people, people sow honor back into you. So make sure you honor up, honor around, and honor those you serve. Make sure you live and breathe in honor. And this world doesn't know honor. Doesn't know honor. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. Jesus, in this passage, he's addressing two systems. He's addressing the system of the word, and he's addressing the system of the world. The system of the world says this, I did it my way. Everybody makes up their own truth. Whatever works for you, works for you. Well, I still know one plus one equals three. Some of you are like, Did he not, does he not know math? No, because that's a mathematical fact. One plus one equals two. You can go around and say one plus one equals three all you want. Everyone's going to look at you and slap you silly. Because they're going to be like, no, it's two. There are some things that are just fact. Let me tell you what fact is. God loves you. That's a fact, Jack. God is with you. God is for you. God is near the brokenhearted. When you're hurting, God gets closer to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Sometimes we think he gets further from us. Well, he says he's near the brokenhearted. So when you're broken, he's actually closer to you. He leans into where you are and into your pain. See, the system of this world is I did it my way. The system of the word is I did it his way. I want to do it God's way. I want to do it God's way. That's why we call him Yahweh. Because he's the one who leads us on the right way. Church, what we do will not always make sense to those around us. But if you want to make God proud, give people Jesus. Yeah. Wherever you're at. See, crazy out of this world people are always finding ways to give people Jesus, to find ways to share hope, to make sure they make, help people feel better uh, when they leave them than when they found them. But here's what I know. The last 13 months has been interesting. And this is what I believe. We, we've got to learn to retrain the brain. Because over the last 13 months, we've been programmed. I'm going to give you an example of this. 
in one of our services today we closed off the service and we decided today we're no longer dismissing you like cattle okay we're gonna let you leave because you're adults you can do this Now, I know I say that, and there's going to be someone who proves me wrong. But you are. Sometimes I don't realize what I say till after I say it. You could do this. But in this service today, at the end of the prayer, everyone sat down. They sat down waiting to be dismissed. And I literally turned around and I said, You can leave. Because last time I checked, you are not cattle. I'm examining just to make sure that's true. You are adults who can make wise decisions. And so at the end of the service today, you know what you can do? You can leave. We're not going to escort you out. And everybody said, amen. Amen. So you got to retrain the brain. So see what happened in, since we reopened. Everyone's been retrained. And that's just a simple example. Habits have changed. There's a lot of habits that have changed. Did you know your brain has one billion neurons? A neuron is basically an information messenger. It sends information from one part of your body to another part of your body. It's what causes you to move, all right? And over the last 13 months, you have had neurons traveling through your body communicating communicating one thing or it seems to be one thing negative 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 now I'm not dismissing that what we experienced was not real okay COVID is a real thing okay but but let me say this the human brain cannot endure negative 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 Negative. God did not call our church to be the NNN, the Negative News Network. He called us to be the GNN, the Good News Network. Amen. And so if you're looking for a church that's just going to say, well, it sucks to be in 2021, you're in the wrong house. Because in this house, we're going to be positive. We're going to be encouraging. We're going to be uplifted. We're going to tell you you're going to get through this. You're going to survive. You're going to come out better and bigger and bolder on the other side. we got to retrain the brain. And so some of us need to retrain. Like, here's the thing about me, right? I, I'm, once again, I'm crazy, okay? Here's the thing about me. I don't think, where's my mask? I literally leave and say, oh, shoot, I forgot my mask. Because I'm not going to normalize what's abnormal. I'm not going to normalize what's abnormal. And here's what's, this is going to encourage somebody today. You know your brain stops growing at 40 years old. It actually starts shrinking. How many, ladies, did I help you out with your husbands? Now you know the problem. Your brain starts shrinking. Now it's still, it's still being used, but I was thinking maybe that's why stupid hits us later in life. It just seems like it, but in 2005, they did a study, the National Science Foundation, hang with me, all right? They published an article regarding um, thoughts that humans have on a day-to-day basis, okay? The average person, according to this study, has between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts per day. 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts per day. They concluded in this study that 95% of those thoughts are repeated every day. Okay? This was the more stunning statistic. 80% of the thoughts you repeat are negative. So if you're negative, 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 and then you put on the boob tube or the television, you're like negative, 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 negative. You know what you're going to start walking around like? Negative, negative, negative. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, no, don't, don't stay away from me. Negative, negative. You're going to go around life thinking everything's negative. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. We don't deny reality here, but we're out of this world. 
That means we accept the realities around us, but we also know there is a God that is sovereign over us. Big difference. And according to a study that was concluded on March 29th of this year, not too long ago, they concluded that 90% of the news is negative today. No surprise why people are negative today. Because you just dial into negativity. I've been saying this for 13 months. Church, hear this. Shut off the news. Shut off the news. Because your brain can't handle it. You've got to retrain the brain. Because negative news plus negative thinking equals negative living. The more negativity you allow in, the more it reprograms your life. And it's time for us, 2021, to retrain the brain. Um, scripture declares it this way. Paul, writing to the church of Philippi, he said this. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix <clears throat> your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. It doesn't say think about things that are full of problems. It says think about things that are worthy of praise. Let me ask you, do you have reason to give God praise today? Yeah. I mean, it, So I want to think on those things. I want to meditate that I still got two legs that can slide in the skinny jeans. Mm -hmm. Look what the Lord has done. You got to retrain the brain. And that's why you need to stop bending to what's trending. And what we're looking at is we're celebrating what's popular instead of what's right. And we wonder why our generation's totally duped. You know, well, hey, look at, how, oh, look at how this person, this person's so cool. If I could just be like that person. Let me tell you something about famous people. They're more messed up than regular people. I mean, I mean, how many marriages do you have to have? Come on, you couldn't get one right, and you're going to tell me how to live my life? Come on. You know, there's a point where we have to end up wising up a little bit as people. Now, this is not Christian. This is just general. People are elevated because lower people elevate them. They only have a voice because you gave them a voice. Retweet, share, put it out there. Who really cares? Who cares? I, you know, famous people die every day. I'm not going to mourn people I don't know. Yeah. Is that terrible to say? I'm just saying it publicly. So, like, oh my gosh, I'm in grief for so and so. I'm like, did you know that? Yeah, but I'm, I'm like, were they part of your family? So, so hurt by that. I'm like, man, I hope that when I die, you guys mourn me the way you mourn some of these famous people. Thank you. One person. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm looking at the clock, but that countdown doesn't make sense. But I'm going to go with I got a lot of time left. Trends come and go. What's trendy today won't trend tomorrow. The Bible says this, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. That should be the thing we're putting out there everywhere. Listen, if you're posting more about what Kanye said, if you're posting more, and you're posting less about the Bible, um, there's a problem. We should be demonstrating what God's word says to the world. Trends fade. So here's a few trends that I'm glad will never come back, okay? I'm praying. The first is this. This better never come back. The mullet. <laughs> better never come back. And I'm going to tell you this right from the go, okay? Here from the jump. If you come in this church with a mullet, I will, by the power of the Holy Spirit, pull out scissors, and I will cut your hair. <laughs> Okay? And you say, well, I can't believe you're doing that. Listen, I'm just following the Holy Spirit's lead. It's okay. 
Just submit to your pastor. All right, here's another one. This is one, I think, the shoulder pads. Come on, ladies. Do you remember those? You'd be up here, you're like, whoa. Like, are you a football player? What is going on? Your shoulder, you remember how many? You remember that? You remember the shoulder pads? Man, that was like, woof. And then men had shoulder pads, too. I mean, he's like, I had suits with shoulder pads. I look back and say, oh, man, if I ever do that again, please take me out. <laughs> these people drive me insane. I'll be honest. I didn't like these people. These, this, this, this one. Popped collars. God gave you a collar to keep it down. Pop collars. I mean, do you remember people wearing multiple pop collars? And you're like, dude, I sweat in one shirt. Pop collars. Um, and you'll know why I'm telling you this one as soon as you see the picture. But this, these shutter shades better never come back in style. Shutter shades, shutters go up and down. They're, how do you see through that? And then this one, I, you know, it's coming back, but I don't think it should. Visor hats, the see-through visor hats, they're coming back. Now, you, you listen, there is one that came back. It just came back. It just came out this week. Look at this. just came out. There's the new. All those come and go. Fashion trends come and go. Movie trends come and go. Come on now. Music trends come and go. I mean, unless you're in the 80s. Those still live on. I know all the old people here. Thank you. Here's why you have to stop bending to what's trending. Because what's in today will be out tomorrow. And if you're always bending to the trends you'll never fully be faithful to God because trends are leaning us away from God instead of propelling us closer to Him. See, the only thing that is in season in every season is the all-powerful written Word of God. It never changes. It is consistent. And I've learned this. If you bend to the trend, you will get broke by the woke you bend to the trend, you will get broke by the woke. Everyone's woke today, and everyone has a platform today. You and your 50 followers. <laughs> and that'll ruin someone's day. Can't believe this person reposted some hate on me. Who cares? They don't have a bearing on your life unless you give it to them. That was just free. You've got to be careful today what you allow into your life. You've got to be cautious because what's culturally sexy doesn't make it biblically right. And so be very cautious. The word stands firm. So stop bending to what's trending. And because you're out of this world, you've got to also see it before you seize it. What, what do you got to see? Everything. I mean, you guys are all kings and queens in God's house. But I learned this principle years ago. God will never put a crown on a clown. <laughs> Some of you ain't taking your faith seriously and you wonder why things ain't going your way. Yeah. Get serious about your faith and watch how things start pivoting for you. Watch how things start adjusting. See, the truth is, I gotta see it before I seize it. See, you have in you what God has placed in you. You have seeds of greatness on the inside of your life. And what's interesting, here's the retrain the brain. Because some of you, when someone calls out the seeds of greatness, you rebuke them for seeing it in you. How could you see this in me? No, the job of your pastors is to pull out the greatness that's on the inside. And let me tell you, when I look around this room, I see all kinds of potential. But I'm not looking at what you are today. I'm looking at what you're going to be 10 years from now. I'm going to say, man, if this person can do this little, oh, man, oh, man, that person, that person's anointed. That person's gifted. Let me tell you, church, you are gifted. Amen. Come on, just, it feels good to amen when you get a compliment. You are gifted. Amen. You are anointed. Amen. 
You are equipped with everything for life and godliness according to the Bible. God has given you everything you need. You are better than you think you are. In fact, you are good looking 10 years from now. And you are out of, you are out of this world. Hear me today, God is with you, God is for you, God is in you, and God is around you, but he's also behind you picking up your mess, and he's before you paving a way. God is wherever you are, he's with you. You are not normal. You're not normal. What do you see in you? What do you see in you? I can tell you, God sees more in you than you see in yourself because he put in you what's in you. And he sees it, he wants to call. If you always see yourself in lack, you'll always be running in lack. If you always see yourself with no friends, you'll be running with no friends. The Bible says, whoever wants friends should show themselves friendly. So stop complaining about finding a friend and start being a friend. Find someone who needs it. See, when I look around this house, our church, I see more than what you currently are. I see some history makers. I see bondage breakers. I see people that can plunder hell and populate heaven. I see an army that's rising up that is going to bring hope, help, and healing to Long Island and beyond. Well, how can I do that where I am now? Because I don't see you where you are now. I see you where you're going to be. I see what God has. In, and sometimes, remember, God gives pastors eyes to see what you can't see. And so sometimes I see things in you. I'm like, man, I wish they would see it in themselves. I wish they could see the potential. Yeah, we're in America, and I love America. And I'm grateful to be raised in this country. But we are part of a higher kingdom. Amen. We are part of a higher destiny and a higher call. Church, I wish you could see what I see in you. But it's not just enough to see it. You've got to eventually say it. See it, say it, seize it. See it, say it, seize it. See it, say it, seize it. It's not enough just to see it. Then I've got to declare it because there's power in your tongue. There's power in what you say. So if you see your potential in church and then you walk out of church like, eh, my life stinks. I wish I could just work one day a week on Sundays like the pastors do. I can tell you this, not one of our pastors plays golf. We go, why? We, we're terrible. <laughs> Reality is we don't have time because we're about the Father's business. Right. not saying there's not time to enjoy life, but I enjoy it on vacation. Yeah. Isn't that how you live? Okay, wealthy people here. Yeah. Apparently you make up your own schedules. What was I talking about? Happy Easter, everybody. Hey, that still worked. All right, good. See, the truth is the reason why you got to say it is because there's power in your declaration. And so when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you have to just remind yourself what God says about you. I'm special. I am God's chosen people. I am his royal priesthood. I am his holy nation. I am God's special possession. Come on, church, you gotta say it and you gotta seize it, but you gotta first, you gotta see it first. You gotta see it because you're out of this world. Your eyes will see what others cannot. Your mouth will declare what others will not and your life will become what others will never because you're out of this world. Say it, seize it. See it, say it, seize it. See it, say it, seize it. Normal people, is overrated be abnormal for God be willing to look a little weird for God let people criticize you for being rowdy in church listen I, we're out to eat last night walking by this one place and in Huntington and it's lined out the door people are waiting to get in there's no social distancing there I'm like what the heck's going on in that place there's no music it's just good food. People ought to line up for a good spiritual diet. Okay. You ought to be in church. And that's why you cannot let where you've been keep you from where you're going. Don't let where you've been keep you from where you're going. That's positive and negative. Because sometimes when good things happen to us, all we live is the good old days. I remember in 1986, I caught the winning touchdown, put my hand up, and 
Life has sucked from that point on. <laughs> Reality is, the good days can keep you from better days. And so I don't just, I don't stay stuck in where I was. I'm grateful for it. But I'm grateful that there's more in store for my life. There's more in store. There's more in store for each of us. Church, hear me today. Don't let anything you've been, where you've been keep you from where you're, you're going because you were once lost, but now you're found. You were once blind, but now you see. I once dreamed of being two things in life. Two things. All I ever wanted to be was two things. Two things. First was Jerry Rice. <laughs> Didn't work out so well. Jerry Rice. The second thing I wanted to be was I wanted to be a guitarist in a rock and roll band. And so, and let me show you this picture. This is me at about 15 years old. That's disturbing. I mean, you can't unsee that. But does this give you a glimpse as to why I wear skinny jeans today? Because it was spandex back in the day. So, just reliving the glory days, right? So I guess you could say it this way. God didn't allow me to play an axe or a guitar in front of cheering crowds, but he allowed me the privilege of raising up the sword, the word of God, in front of people every single weekend. And so, I think I'm grateful today because I ain't what I used to be. Somebody say, I can't believe this guy. Um, you don't know me pre-Jesus. What I once was, I am light years beyond what I used to be. But God still ain't done with Todd Bishop yet. And God ain't done with you yet. See, you're heading to a divine destiny. And your destiny is bigger than you think. Don't allow 13 months to derail your destiny. Because before you know it, we're going to be through COVID as we know it now. And on the other side of COVID, you're going to be one of four things. You're going to be a monk, a hunk, a drunk, or a chunk. <laughs> the choice is going to be yours, what you want to be. And it's all about who are you aligning yourself with and what is your view in this life. Because the choice will be yours. It's time to get up again, to run after the plan and purpose that God gave you. Because the enemy stole a year from us, but it's time to take that year back. And so, how many of you, any OCD people here? I'm going to test your OCD. Okay, we got a few of you. How many have been wondering the whole time, what's wrong with my finger? Just raise your hand if you've been saying like, is he, did he stick his finger up his nose too far? What, what happened? Well, let me, let me tell you what happened. So, um, last Sunday, last Sunday, someone gave me flowers uh, for our family, so... I took some flowers home, and it was Scott Stuber from the church, and it was his fault all this happened to me. So Scott uh, gives us flowers. I take him home. I leave him on the counter. I was exhausted after our services, and so I, was, I just leave him on the flower. I get up Monday morning, and uh, I'm like, man, I got to cut the stems, and I got to put them in the vase. And so I'm looking for the scissors. They're always here. It was my daughter's fault. <laughs> Have you ever been frustrated? Because the scissors are supposed to be here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a true story. So I'm like, well, there no scissors. So about a year ago, I bought some Cutco knives. So I was like, man, these things are sharp, man. They cut a steak like nobody's business. I'm like, I'll just cut the stems. No problem. It'll be quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right into my finger I mean it was like right in there and 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 it was so so quick it was so quick I was like whoa and you know that first imp there was no pain it was like whoa oh pressure on the hand right come on Online campus, someone just whistled at me, which is a little strange. Okay. It's not the strangest thing that's happened to me while I was preaching, but it's, it's up there. And so, so here I am. I put pressure on it. I'm like, oh, and you'll be proud of me. I didn't say one curse word. Woo! 
work, not one. In fact, it's just not in my DNA. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm holding, I'm like, oh my gosh. I go to the bathroom downstairs. I'm like, I'm like, oh, there's a lot, oh, there's a lot of, a lot of blood. So I'm like, oh, I run upstairs, Mary, 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 and Mary's like, yes. <laughs> I mean, she woke up perfect. Her hair flowed, and I was like, oh, my finger. I got distracted for a second. I was like, my finger. We go into the bathroom in our bedroom. She, we rinse it off. She goes, yeah, you got to go to the ER. You got to go. I'm like, okay. I'm wrapping up. I, I'll drive myself. <laughs> like, I'll drive myself. I get down to the bottom of the stairs, and there's literally, then it's like doing this. Come on, how many know when it's pulsating? You're like, <laughs> you feel like your whole body's pulsating, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm coming home. <laughs> so we wrap it up. Anyway, my beautiful wife drives me to the ER. Three and a half hours later, bucket of influ uh, you know, they, they, they know their schedule there really well. And so three and a half hours to get a few stitches. So ends up, young doctor comes in. Doogie Hauser came in. He's like 30 years old. And he looks so young. And I was like, man, how old are you, bro? I'm 30. Oh, you been in this long? A few years. I'm like... I think you're gonna need five stitches and I'm like all right and it was pretty deep and five you know anything over three on a finger is supposed to be pretty significant so I sliced right like right down almost to the bone how many how many of you have a weak stomach okay close your eyes right now because I'm gonna show you all a picture if you have a weak stomach close your eye okay go ahead put that up there close your eyes if you have a weak stomach Wow, it's, it was a... <laughs> all right, you can take it, take it. All right, you go, y'all can look. No, I'm just kidding. Don't look yet. Okay, now you can look. I should have actually said online, look away, but okay. Slice in. They, they, they want to do x-rays, make sure it didn't chip the bone or anything like that. And obviously, thank God it didn't. And, and the whole day, you know what I start repeating to myself? I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did this. We just had Easter, and I'm going through, oh, that's really, it's terrible, I can't believe, you know, anyway, long and short it was, uh, I get, they end up doing six stitches, so, on the finger, so, ends up, I get up Tuesday morning, and I said, I'm not going to let this keep me from my routine, so I got up, and I went on a prayer walk, which I highly recommend prayer walks, put on some worship music, go for a walk, just you talk to God, and God talks to you, and, and so I'm on this prayer walk, and I'm probably 15 minutes into the prayer walk, and uh, God started speaking to me. And contrary to what some pastors say, God does speak to me. Okay, some say, I've never heard God's voice. I have. Not audibly, but in my spirit. I've heard it. And so I literally rush home to write down what God was telling me and what he was downloading. You can put that journal entry up there. And so this is kind of how my journals look from time to time. And so I wrote this, 4 6 2021, 8 34 in the morning on a prayer walk and God told me in a gentle whisper I allowed you to cut your finger now think about this the Bible says this the steps of the righteous are directed by God most of us only believe that in good things the steps of I got a pay raise the steps of the righteous are directed by the Lord oh man they give me the court the steps of the righteous oh she said yes to the dress the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord oh my gosh I got a good doctor's report the step listen the steps of the righteous are also ordered by the Lord when things are not good Come on. Come on. Come on. says this I allowed you to cut your finger to remind you that your mission is to point people to Jesus. Now, I didn't know this till I heard that, but that's my pointer finger. And this is the finger that most times you get a picture of me from church. It's this finger outstretched. Point people to Christ. Then you go, I felt like the Holy Spirit say, and you will always face attacks and criticism for how you reach people. It will cut you deep at times. Yeah. Yeah. 
But stay the course and never forget that reaching people is the point of the church. Not everyone will get it, and others will slice you for it. But don't, I can't read my own writing, surrender that mission no matter how deep they will cut you. So, so God gave me the day after Easter a reminder of my mission. So when there's a scar there, which there will be for the rest of my life, whenever I point that finger, you know what I'm going to think? God, you've called me to point people to Jesus. When I'm at LIU, God, I'm here to point people to Jesus. When I'm meeting with local politicians, which I actually do, I'm going to point people to Jesus. When I meet with business leaders, I'm going to point people to Jesus. When I meet with people in the church, I'm going to point them to Christ. No matter what it costs me, sometimes it costs a great deal no matter how deep, no matter how painful, my mission is to point people to Christ. What's interesting about that, they were originally gonna do five stitches, they did six. I'm a numbers guy. Six in the Bible is an important number, it's the number of man, pointing man to Jesus. Incidentally, Brendan pointed this out to us this week in staff meeting when I was sharing this with them. He basically said, hey, you know, this year, it's been six years since we rechanged the, since we changed the name of our church. Our church, for many of you who don't know this, used to be called Point Church. Six years ago, we changed it to Church Unleashed. What a reminder by God that my purpose is beyond a pandemic. My purpose is beyond some pain. My purpose is beyond my problems. My purpose is only satisfied when I live my life for what God has called me to church. I hope this serves as a reminder to you that when you go through something, nothing is ever an accident. God uses everything because the steps of the righteous are directed by God. See, the average person will just continue after Monday saying, I was so stupid. But then God woke me up and said, you are not of this world. You see things differently than others see it. You hear things differently than others hear it. And I wanted you never ever to forget, no matter where you are or what you do or what you go through or what you experience, you have one mission. It's to point people to Christ. The Bible says this, you are a chosen people. You. Didn't say the pastors are the chosen people. It says you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession for one purpose, to show forth the praises, to declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous, wonderful, amazing light. And sometimes God gets our attention in pain because we weren't listening when we were walking in promise. Sometimes God's just got to remind even the pastor of his mission to never forget and to never look back. Because I know what the Bible says. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or God's children ever begging for bread. You are not of this world. You are unique. You are different. You are called. You are anointed. You are equipped. You are inspired. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the apple of God. Come on, give God praise.